so I think we should start with the next talk by my colleague Christian Budde from the University of the Free State from um, South Africa. And today he talks about a Luma Phillips type theorem for bicontinuous semigroups. <laughs> the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander, for the nice introduction. And uh, just a FYI, in South Africa, it's already three o'clock, so <laughs> we are one hour in advance uh, to Germany. So as um, Alexander already mentioned, today I will talk about the Luma Phillips type gen generation theory for bicontinuous semigroups. And this is actually a joint work with uh, Sven Arke Wegner from Hamburg. And this work was uh, funded by the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft just to acknowledge this. Okay, just a, a brief outline of my talk. So I just want to start with the class of bicontinuous semigroups, some examples, some motivation. Then I will talk about the Luma Phillips generation theorem for C0 semigroup, and then a first result for bicontinuous semigroups. Then I will give examples. And in the end, I will talk about the mixed topology and closable operators to actually obtain uh, general Luma Phillips uh, genera generation theorem for bicontinuous semigroups. So let's start with the motivation. So, one involved motivating, it's not a toy example, I would say, but it's a motivating example for bicontinuous semigroups. Um, on the space of con a bounded continuous functions on Rn, where n is a natural number, consider the following differential operator with, the, with this domain. And consider the uh, corresponding abstract Cauchy problem. And in fact, what can be proven is that for each initial value in the, complex, uh, in the bounded continuous functions on Rn, there actually exists a solution UTX of this uh, abstract Cauchy problem. Moreover, there exists an operator semigroup on CB, so family of bounded linear operators on the space of bounded continuous functions such that UTX, so the solution of this F Sarkozy problem, can be represented as a semigroup applied to this initial value. But one can show that this semigroup is not strongly continuous. Actually, to be strongly continuous, it's required uh, quite uh, strong um, assumptions. And this is our idea. So you have operator semigroups on Banach spaces, which are not strongly continuous. Another example is just consider the shift, the translation semigroup on CB. This is also a counterexample for, for an operator semigroup, which is not strongly continuous. OK, and what is the setting? The setting was actually um, introduced by Franziska Kühnemund. She was a PhD student from Werner Nagel in Tübingen. And she introduced the concept of bicontinuous semigroups. And the idea is, as mentioned previously, you have a Banach space already, like the continuous bounded functions. And what you do in addition is you add a locally convex topology and assume this is generated by a family of seminorms such that the following assumptions are satisfied. First of all, the norm topology is finer than a locally convex topology tor. B, X, so the Banach space, X is sequentially complete on norm bounded sets, meaning that whenever I have a tor Cauchy net, which is a tor Cauchy sequence, which is norm bounded, then it's tor convergent. And the third assumption is that the dual space of X with respect to the locally convex topology tor is norming, saying that the norm of X can be expressed as the supremum over all norm one, norm one tor continuous functionals. And just to give some examples of spaces satisfying this, the setting is now the space of uh, bounded continuous functions equipped with a compact open topology is one example, the space of bounded linear operators on a Banach space equipped with the strong operator topology or the dual space equipped with the weak star topology. All three satisfy the, uh, the, these general assumptions. 
Okay, and what is now a bicontinuous semigroup? So semigroup of bounded linear operators on a Banach space is called bicontinuous. And then you have to add with respect to a locally convex topology tau. If the following holds, first of all, now it's, it's a semigroup, but this is in the definition. It has to be strongly tall continuous. So the orbits are not longer um, asked to be norm, con strongly norm continuous, but tall continuous. Then um, it's exponentially bounded because um, if you, um, like, like um, in the C0 semigroup case, you always have exponentially boundedness of the C0 semigroup. But in general, this is not the case. So you have to, uh, to ask for this as well. And third, thirdly is that uh, the semigroup is locally by equicontinuous. And what, what does this mean? That for every norm bounded sequence Xn, which is tall convergence to zero, we have that TT Xn converges to zero with respect to the locally convex topology uniformly on bounded intervals. Okay, and just to have some examples in mind, uh, what are nice uh, bicontinuous semigroups? Consider, for example, as I mentioned uh, already at the pre previous slide, in the, at the first slide, the left translation semigroup on the space of bounded continuous functions equipped with a compact open topology. And then the translation, this is a bicontinuous semigroup. Then the dual semigroup on the dual Banach space, because in general, the, the dual of a C0 semigroup is not a C0 semigroup. If you restrict it to the sun dual, it is, but in general, it, it's not uh, um, C0, but it's bicontinuous with respect to the weak star topology. And the third example is the implemented semigroup on the space of bounded linear operators. So UTL is TT, L, S, S, T, where TT and S, T are C0 semigroups. So you multiply from the left with T, from the right with S of T. And this is also um, a bicontinuous semigroup. And it's actually a C0 semigroup if and only if TT and S, T are both uniformly continuous semigroups. And then you have some more examples, uh, semigroups induced by flows, the Ornstein Uhlenbeck semigroup on CB of H are uh, uh, other example. And there, the, the list is uh, even longer. OK. OK, and, and, and as in the case of C0 semigroup, you can define a generator of a bicontinuous semigroup. And it's defined exact, almost, almost exactly like the C0 semigroup generator. So you actually take the tall limit of TTX minus X divided by T and not the norm limit. And the domain then exists of all X and X such that this limit exists. And you have to require that, that this uh, supremum is actually finite. Otherwise, some weird things can happen. You, you want to have to control of the locally convex topology as well as the over the, the norm. So this is... Uh, the domain. And then you can prove a lot of things like um, D of A, uh, A is a closed operator. And uh, it, on the domain, the, the semigroup on the, the generator, they commute, and so on and so on. And there's also Hilly Yoshida theorem, but I will uh, come to this in, in a few minutes. So the domain, uh, the, the generator of a bicontinuous semigroup, this behaves almost as nice as um, the generator of, of the C0 semigroup. Beside, for example, that D of A is not densely defined, but it's so-called uh, by density defined. OK. Let's talk now about the main topic, namely the Luma-Phillips generation uh, theory. So recall the following definition, linear operator. I think everybody should yeah. will know. On a Banach space X is called dissipative if the norm of lambda minus A applied to X is bigger or equal than lambda times the norm of X for all lambda bigger than zero and for all X in the domain of A. Okay, 
And because we have the Hiller Yoshida theorem for C0 semi groups, we have the Luma Phillips theorem as well. This is more or less a consequence. So for a densely defined dissipative operator A on a Banach space X, the following statements are equivalent. First of all, the closure of A generates a contraction semi group. And B, the range of lambda minus A is dense in X for all and hence uh, for some and hence for all lambda bigger zero. So to generalize these notions, we have to um, consider several things. First of all, what do we do with the dissipative operators? So we have to replace them by another class of operator, which are dissipative for bicontinuous semigroups. And we have to talk about the closure. What do we mean with the closure here? Because you can take the closure with respect to the norm or with respect to the locally convex topology. So this is um, what we have to uh, talk about. And now, fortunately, there is a, a Hiller Yoshida theorem for bicontinuous semigroups as well. And this is due to uh, Franziska Kühnemund. And I will just um, mention the case for contractive semigroups. And this is the following. So let X with a norm and the locally convex topology be a biadmissible space. So this is a space um, having the properties I mentioned in the first slide. So it's, it's norming, it's uh, the tor, uh, the locally convex topology is uh, coarser than the norm topology, et cetera, et cetera. And let A be a linear operator on a Vana space, then the following are equivalent. The operator is the generator of a bicontinuous contraction semigroup, and B, the operator A, satisfies this nice Hiller Yoshida estimate. If this would be all, um, then, then would be then we would be happy, and this would be much more easy, easier. But unfortunately, you have another requirements. You have to ask that A is bi densely defined, and the family of these operators is by equicontinuous, meaning actually that for each norm bounded tor null sequence xm, one has that lambda n uh, and then resolve into the power n xm converges to zero with respect to tor uniformly for all n in lambda bigger zero. As uh, oh, this has to be uh, as m tends to infinity. Okay. So we have this. So from this, we can actually prove the following. Um, now, first of all, we, have, we, 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 we see that one direction of the um, luma philip theorem for bicontinuous semigroup uses A to B. So this is um, the, the, the easy part. Uh, because if you have a, a contraction semigroup, then you have all nice properties uh, mentioned in B, but the other way around. So this is the difficult part for, for, for bicontinuous semigroups. And now we need the following definition. And this is actually inspired by the work of Albanese and Jonet. So let A be an operator on a, such a biadmissible space. Then we call this operator bidissipative if there exists a fundamental system of semi-norms generating the topology and such that, and now you um, substitute the norm by the semi-norms. And so this would be only dissipative in the, in the, in the tor topology, but to be by dissipative, we need another requirement, namely that the norm of X is the supremum over all these seminorms in the fundamental system of seminorms. So you have a kind of um, norming property for this fundamental system of seminorms. And as in the, in the case for, for C0 semigroup, you can actually prove nice things. So let A be a dissipative operator on a biadmissible space. Then the following assertions are true. First of all, lambda minus A is injective for all lambda uh, bigger than zero. And moreover, you can not ask for uh, the seminar of 
lambda minus a applied to x is bigger or equal to lambda of x, but you can take the resolvent so that the semi norm of r lambda a x is lower or equal than one over lambda p of x for all lambda zero and uh, p in this generating okay generating family of semi norms. You can also put uh, gamma here and all x in the range of lambda minus a. And lambda, you can also prove that lambda minus a is subjective for some lambda bigger than zero if and only if it's su subjective for all lambda. And in addition, you have that uh, the positive real line is in the result. And with, with this proposition at hand, we can now prove the first result, namely that a be a dis bi dissipative bi density defined enclosed operator on a bi admissible space. Then the following statements are equivalent. A generates a bicontinuous contraction semi group on X, and B, lambda minus A is subjective for some lambda bigger than zero. And what you make use of is obviously this norming property, because if it's dissipative in the in, in if it's bidissipative, due to the norming property, it's also dissipative in the in the original sense. So this is what, what you uh, make use of uh, several times, actually. Um, OK, let's consider some examples. So the first example is the translation semigroup on CB. So consider the um, space of bounded continuous function on the interval 0 infinity, with 0 included, equipped with the seminorm, as well as the compact open topology. So it's uh, it's a bi-admissible space. And define the operator to be the minus the first derivative, so the, the shift in the right direction. And d of a is um, this domain with some initial condition. Now, the resolvent of a can be determined explicitly. So you can really you know, make a computation. And then you see that r lambda a f x is e to the power minus lambda x integral of of this exponential function multiplied by f of t. And this actually shows that lambda minus a is subjective. And then consider the fundamental system of semi norms, pn, with pn of f is the supremum of f of x, where x is now in the, in the, the compact interval 0n. And if n is now arbitrary, and if x is in 0n, then we can um, estimate this. Uh, so lambda um, times the, the, the absolute value of this resolvent applied to the function evaluated in x is smaller equal than one minus e to the power minus lambda x times p of n. Now, but but one minus e to the power minus lambda n is always smaller or equal to one. So you have that this expression is sl uh, smaller equal than p of n of f. So it's uh, actually a bi-dissipative operator. And then you actually know that this operator generates a bicontinuous contraction group. I mean, this is also not, not easy to see, but it's straightforward to see what the, what the semi-group could be. And in the, in the next example, it's even worse. So define now on the space of or con bounded continuous function on the on the whole reliant again with the supremum norm and uh, the compact uh, open topology, and consider the one-dimensional Laplacian. So a of f is the second derivative, and this is the domain. And um, it has been shown by Kuhnemann, Mund, and Farkas that the heat semigroup actually has exactly this. Um, generator. But for this, they had to know the semigroup. But we can now prove without knowing that this, that there is a, a, a semigroup, that this is actually a generator of a bicontinuous semigroup without knowing the um, semigroup explicitly. And this is the, the big advantage also for C0 semigroups and the uh, Luma Phillips theorem. So for lambda zero uh, bigger than zero, we can describe the resolvent operator by this. 
This again shows the subjectivity of the operator. And now let n be arbitrary x in minus n n. Again, with the with the same um, fundamental system of generating semi norms, and then you can make these estimates where p n f is supremum x in minus n n of the absolute value of f of x. And this shows again that a d a is a biodissipative operator. And then we may conclude that a, so the one dimensional Laplacian with this domain is actually the generator of a con contraction by continuous semi. Uh, so this is, uh, from my point of view, this is a good example to, to motivate um, the use of the um, Luma Phillips theorem. And let's now we want a more general version law because in the original um, theory by Luma Phillips, you had this closure, you have the closure. And for this, we have to talk about mixed topologies and closable operators. Uh, recall in the in the Banach space setting, we have that A is a linear operator on a Banach space, and we call an operator closable, closable. If for every sequence xn and d of a, if xn converges to zero and a xn to y, one has that uh, y is uh, zero. And if you are in a locally convex space, um, this topology has not to be first countable a priori. Uh, so you cannot only make uh, use of sequences, but you have to use nets. So we call it operator tor clausable with respect to locally convex topology tor on, on space X. If for every net X alpha in DFA, if X alpha converges to zero and A X alpha converges to Y, one has um, Y zero. So the idea is now to combine both settings. So the settings of, of, of the norm space and the locally convex topology. And this leads actually to, to the so-called mixed topology. And this is the following definition. This is um, there's an article from V Vega from 1961, if I'm not completely wrong, in Studia Mathematica. There he um, studied mixed topologies in a more general setting. And we will just restrict ourselves now to our our bicontinuous setting. So let X be a biadmissible space. Then the mixed topology gamma, and gamma is now dependent on, on the norm and the locally convex topology. And this is the locally convex topology generated by the following family of seminorms. So gamma tilde is P tilde A and P N, where P N is a sequence uh, in the fundamental system of seminorms and A N is a um, sequence with positive entries, which converges to zero. And what is P tilde is now the supremum of A N and Pn. And so you see that you really mix norm and uh, locally convex topology. And as a matter of fact, the mixed topology lies between the locally convex topology and the norm topology. So it's stronger than tor and weaker than, than the norm topology. And it's also a nice fact that a sequence converge with respect to the mixed topology if and only if it's norm bounded and tor convergent. And moreover, the classes of bicontinuous semigroups and the class of gamma strongly continuous and locally sequential tor equicontinuous semigroups coincide. So the, the, the second result here is uh, also due to uh, Vivega. And the third one, uh, this is uh, one result, uh, Balint Farkashet is one, one of his uh, papers. So there, there's the relation between mixed topologies and uh, by continuous semigroups. And from this, we can now prove the following that A be a bidissipative and by density defined operator on a bi admissible space. And assume, and this is important here, that X is complete with respect to the mixed topology. Otherwise, because we um, derive this result from a result from Albanese and Jonet, and there you need that X is a a uh, complete locally convex space. So we have to, to assume this. And if range of lambda minus a is bi dense, then the gamma closure generates a bicontinuous uh, contraction semigroup. 
So, um, yeah, and just to, to remark um, for a final remark, the space of uh, bundle continuous functions, the, the corresponding uh, mixed topology is complete, and the space of linear bounded operators with a strong operator topology, and then the corresponding uh, mixed topology is also complete. So the this is the assumption that X is complete with respect to the mixed topology is not uh, too restrictive actually. And the, the gamma closure is now a, a nice solution because, uh, because you cannot take, um, how to say this, um, the, if you want to define the by closure in, in some sense, you would guess to have some norm bounded and tall convergence sequence. And if you try to work it out, it's not working. And because it's complete, uh, the space with respect to the mixed topology, this actually gives a, a, a nice finish. And this is the most general result we could derive in, in the Luma Phillips setting for bicontinuous semi groups. And I think now we have four minutes for questions. So thank you very much. And if there are any questions, please do not hesitate to ask.